Hey guys, Jason here for Outsiders Initiative. Thank you for watching. Appreciate you giving me some of your time. Uh, tonight, no, I say tonight because it's about 4 in the morning here. Um, we can do not really a review, but more of a you know, why video. This is part of my kit, and this is why I have it this way. Um, this, this channel, as well as our page, isn't really big on reviews. Like everyone else does, we're not really going to be doing unboxing or, you know, a lot of reviews unless it actually has significance. Um, we're trying to stay away from the normal that everyone does. But, uh, basically we're just going to be doing, you know, whatever comes up. We see a lot of basically driving videos in the sense of us talking while driving or whatever. Um, so, let's get on with it. This video is going to be... As the title states, my SBR, um, which is this. This is a custom SBR that I built. It's based on, built on a black rain ordnance lower. Now you can't really see it, but um, it's got a ALG defense uh, trigger, excellent trigger. I'm not a big fan of the super light, super, you know, just not fast triggers. The ALG defense trigger is basically a polished, finely tuned military trigger. Um, I'd rather go something like that. One, it's only about 50 to $75, depending on where you go. But it does get the job done, and it gets the job done supremely well. Sorry about that. I'm getting ready to I feel like something, something in my throat. Um, Alright, we'll start with the back. First off, I've got the Magpul MSLK, I believe. Minimalist stock. I love this thing. It's very nice. Uh, very light. It weighs slightly more than a CTR, but it's very compact, very tight, so it fits you know, in your shoulder really, really well. It doesn't snag. It's as you can tell the profile is very, um, you know, it's very little compared to most other stocks. Um, it doesn't flare out in the back like a lot of the LE stocks and a couple other stocks out there. Um, basic mill spec buffer tube as well as H1 buffer. Um, let's see, we'll start with the lower and work our way up as I said. Black, black Rain Ordnance Lower. Um, the reason I'm with Black Rain, I live in Springfield, Missouri, and Black Rain is in the ocean, Missouri. It's about 45 to an hour drive, depending on the way you take. They are a 100% American company. Everything they do is in-house. They buy the bar stock, or brick stock, as I like to call it, um, and then they mill it out themselves, machine it, do everything themselves in-house. Um, I went with the billet lower, uh, you know, one piece trigger guard, flared magwell. Um, it's even got some, you can kind of tell right here, the uh, gnarling, not gnarling, but a, you know, I guess jimping would be the proper term for a little bit of extra grip. It actually looks cool. Um, you can kind of see their emblem right here. Biohazard. They are just a phenomenal company, great craftsmanship. Um, it is hard to find a good review for the rifles. Um, look at uh, Aaron Cohen at Sage Dynamics. He did a really good review on the Vault 15, which is their, as far as I'm concerned, their fleet or flagship model. It's really good. Um, I have, you know, a, uh, I'm not entirely sure what lower parts it is. Um, I think it might be a Black Rain. I'm not sure. My buddy who helped, who sourced all the parts through his, uh, his, uh, not really connections, but his bulk of parts that he had, um, you know, he basically gave me the parts for that. Like I said, the ALG defense trigger, um, and I also have a Ambi, uh, selector. I really like the Ambi, um, it works you know, really well. It's held in there with a, with a uh, hex screw, but it 
it does get the job done and I like I went with the ambi um, you know that's what allows you to go bang every time it's so if I have to switch hand switch or transitions from right to left or left to right or whatever me being a right hand shooter is most likely will be from right to left and then back I can manipulate it without having to constantly reach around one way or the other um, that's just for me for you it might be different um, I want the Magpul K2 grip I like the K2 um, mainly because of the angle instead of having it back more like you know like a standard A2 grip that you get with basically every uh, AR-15 out here out in there um, it's it's not as steep of an angle it's just more of a uh, I don't know maybe not steep the angle might not be the right term but anyway um, it's this more of a straight ant grip um, it's not as straight as the umbrella corporation but it does work um, really well I, and the reason I went with this um, I really like the place of the angle so instead of having with a factory grip it out you know chicken wing in it I can bring my arm in a lot easier and not feel like I'm straining my wrist so um, so yeah, that's basically the lower, the upper. Uh, we'll start from front or from uh, back to front. Uh, just I have some cheap, not really cheaply made, cheaply priced though. Uh, flip up sights. Don't know the brand. Um, I am gonna be switching this these out in a few months when I get some other things taken care of. Um, for uh, I like the, basically an HK style front sight and a. Uh, I'm gonna go with either the Daniel Defense or the uh, Nevesky rear sight. Um, you know, basically it's like the rear sight that comes with the uh, the Evans Scar. Um, but for what I have for right now, these are, and these are actually steel; they're not aluminum. Uh, they're really, really good sights. I like the HK style front sight. Um, so I like. I don't know why. I just I do it. I pick it up a little easier versus the standard. You know the uh, I call it the splitting fork with um, that comes that most people use. Um, I don't use Magpul. I don't like the polymer. I like the case I bump into the wall or something. I don't gotta worry about it snapping off as easily. Um, and you know I'm human, so I am clumsy. Uh, got Aimpoint Pro. Um, I love this thing. Anything Aimpoint, you know, you're good to go. Not a big fan of the uh, EOTEX. Not really a big fan of ACOGS either. But um, you know, but you know, with the aim point, you know, it's buy once, cry once. Uh, so I mean, it thinks a tank, night vision compatible, which you know, I'm not an operator, uh, but night vision compatible allows me to say I want to go boar hunting uh, and use night vision. I can with uh, you know no problems also I do plan on taking within the next year or so a class at a class two at Calort group down in Georgia and you know aim points you know with their recommendation and they have the best as far as I'm concerned um, one biggest turn on with the aim point is the size of durability and I'm not even going to go near the warranty because I'm not worried about the warranty because for me to destroy this, I'm gonna to have to go a step farther than Larry Vickers, and there's no way in hell I'm gonna go that far. But I can leave the dot on, as you can clearly see it in there. I can leave it on at this br at this setting for about five, six years. If I go two settings lower, a setting or two lower, I can actually leave it on for eight. Um, but you know, I can leave it on. Don't gotta worry about it. Don't gotta think about it. And that's what I'm. That's what I want. I want to be able to just grab my rifle and go if I have to. Um, basic upper receiver at the moment. I do. Um, and this is gonna sound kind of stupid, but I do want to get a black rain ordnance billet upper to, just to match. But you know, that's you know, that's not really necessary. That's what I want to do down the line after I get everything else taken care of on this and some training in, or I should say more training. Um, you can actually never have enough training. 
But uh, moving on to the next, I have the LWRC. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the name is of the rail, but it's a piston or a split. Well, I call it split piston rail, meaning that you, I can take these two screws here, undo them, and this top part up to, up to this seam right here can come off. And if I'm decided to, be, to drive a, a piston rifle if say it was on a piston rifle I could take it off take off the piston and parts clean do all the cleaning and everything and and it go back on no problem uh, this rail I swear by it I love it I know a lot of guys are in the key mod and the uh, M-lock I'm not a big fan I like having the extra rail for gripping as well as something if say I have to do a mag dump or whatever I may be doing and the barrel gets hot there's a little more cushion between my hand and however hot the barrel is and the heat radiating it, radiating off it. Um, you know, I, and I also like, there's a couple other things, like if I want, I can jam this, the rail into the corner of a wall if I need to shoot, you know, like that a little easier, give me a little more stability. Um, I know that sounds stupid, kind of like the double strike capability with a SIG or a double axe and single action pistol. But that's just me. Um, you know, I, I really do love this rail. The, even with uh, it being a split, you can't you can't wobble it as long as you got these things down prop these two screws cinched down properly. Um, I'm running some cheap Chinese rubber uh, rubber uh, ladder grips or ladder rail covers. These things are really cool. They're softer than the uh, magical ones and a little more flexible um, but they're, they're just a lot more comfortable if you're shooting without a gloved hand um, um, not to mention if you're gripping it by the rail or for whatever reason running uh, crawling and just pushing your gun up with your hand or whatever it may be you can really actually grip it with these um, another thing with this rail it's actually got as you can tell QD sling mounts on the on each side at the front and the rear of the rail um, the barrel nut and everything is held in with two screws on each side so um, it's the rail system I just highly love if it wasn't this rail system I'd probably go with the guy with the knight's armament um, or an, a geysley rail honestly those two other are looking at kind of the gold standards nowadays um, not a big fan of polymer like the magpul but, uh, you know, for what this is, it's a really good rail system. Um, 223 Wildy Barrel. The uh, bolt, I'm not entirely sure who made it. It was gifted to me. So, um, you know, I, I'm not sure, but it, it, it works. It's marked with USA, so at least I know it's American made. Um, oh, charging handle is the BCM. Uh, BCM gunfighter charging handle. It's the medium latch. It, you know, that's what I went with. Not too big to where I can't grip it, but uh, or not too big to where I can snag it or anything, but not too small to where I can't grip it. Like a factory or a standard military or mil spec charging handle. Um, sorry, I kind of jumped out, missed a few, a few things. Um, Magpul, ASAP or whatever it's called, playing it after. Um, side note, take a zip tie to quiet this. Just to zip tie it down at like an angle and it'll help rattle it a little bit. That or plumber's tape. Um, I do plan on uh, spraying even that spray on rubber. Dollar General, at least here in Missouri, has spray their version of spray on rubber for five bucks. It works really well. Uh, it's just it's worn off with all use of on this thing. Um, Yankee Hill, yeah, Yankee Hill uh, fla uh, flash pressure or brake. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's also I can take this ring off and uh, put, once I get this pressure that I want, I can just throw it on this for on and off. It'll. Uh, you know, just it just goes on right there. That, or if I want to get a uh, a blast 
chamber or whatever it's called. I think, at least I believe it's a blast chamber. I can just throw that on there, which I'm tempted to get that. Um, but I really like this thing redux, reduces the flash really well, and you can just feel the concussion coming off of it too, especially when you bore bath it. Um, for you who don't know, bore bathing, dump some oil down the barrel, set the gun like this, shooting steel cased ammo allows to extract a lot easier than having to basically separate or you know shotgun your barrel on the, on the range or in the middle of a class and trying to pump punch out a uh, a uh, stuck casing um, and then you know last but not least the uh, light um, I know I'm gonna get a lot of uh, controversy with this um, because you know everyone's wanting the surefire or the streamlight those mini the scouts that hang off to the side or you know on the uh, the offset areas I like those but also I like having everything streamlined if you look at this rifle there's nothing hanging off the side at all other than the knob that it the ratchet knob that is on my aimpoint pro um, so I mean even the charging handle doesn't stick out that much it doesn't stick out much more than the bolt or the uh, forward assist and the charging handle but having everything up front nice and streamlined it makes it a little less for me to bump into but I also I like how the light is directly underneath the barrel I know some of you are going to say you need to, that I need to move the light back well I kind of don't really need to, especially since I am getting the can or the blast chamber for it. Whatever one I get first, which is most likely the blast chamber to try. Um, but this light is the Surefire M900. This is the earlier model, which means it's condescent, unfortunately. I am waiting to hear back from Surefire about getting it converted to LED. So that'll bring it from 150 lumens to... Uh, 500 lumens I believe maybe four or three hundred something like that <laughs> excuse me um, but I, do, I really like this light runs on three CR123 batteries um, excuse me it also has the unlike the original if you guys the guys who were in the military um, I've heard a lot of MPs mainly uh, that their M4s had this light on it, it had just the little twist knobs um, you know like if you buy a scout or something at the same type of mount or just had a screw mount this actually has the LaRue uh, quick detach flip mount which I highly recommend um, this thing is locked in place I actually have to use something to pry it open to take it off the weapon um, this you know is it's a really great light very durable um, it has the 150 lumen condescent light which is ran by the pressure pads either here or here I literally just grip and then you know I know a lot of guys are you know they like to run the modified grips at a slight angle but I can still you know just my, with my pinky or ring finger as well as you know I can because it's being operated with the pinky ring finger like this as it is if I don't get that high grip but uh, it also has LED navigation lights which you know that is really cool especially when you're uh, whether you're room clearing or just walking in the woods or you know whatever it's a nice little thing to have where you're not using up your big light and you have the two you have the small you don't gotta pull out a uh, handheld or anything um, but I mean, it's for it's a great light. Um, I actually, for those of you who have used these, you know, or own these, these there are a lot of copies of these. I actually called Surefire when I when I got this in the mail, and verified that it is a real Surefire light. Um, mainly because the pressure pad in the back, um, it doesn't click. It's literally a silent pressure, as well as the sides. Um, for one thing, they said um, it's also the knob and the back right here um, to allow me to go from pressure only to constant on. Um, it doesn't click at all; it's all silent, which you know uh, 
those who are, who are serious about a lot of things understand that, or not serious about a lot of things, but serious about, you know, how your light needs to be quiet at all times, momentary only, um, or constant on either the twist or, you know, the push down. You, you feel this, you feel a a pop, but you don't hear it. Um, you understand that that's a really important thing. But, uh, you know, I, I really do like how having this, and then I also got it for steel. Got it for $172 shipped to my door. Normally, it, the condescents are the older models, but since it's discontinued, it run anywhere from six to eight, depending on where you go, if you can find them. The LEDs are about uh, five to seven, six to seven hundred dollars. Um, it, like I said, it all just depends on where you go. I've seen them cheaper, um, but you know, it this it really is a good light to have. I highly enjoy this setup. Hopefully, um, one day I'll be able to get be able to afford a uh, a peck box so I can write all my own uh, kit when I go to a caloric group. Um, but guys, if you have any questions, you know, please feel free to leave a comment. You know, um, I'm ha more than happy to you know, ask, answer any questions. Uh, if you think, if you have any advice, please let me know. Um, this gun has sat in my truck as from when I was working security, when it was a full length, uh, as well as an SBR when I'm working security, it sits there. Um, um, so, you know, most of my mags are GI, mainly because that's what I had on hand from, but, uh, I recommend Lantern mags to the core, um, no hex mags, are shit, these are junk, do not get them. I know everyone's like, oh, well, they're cheap and everything, and I can spend more money on ammo or classes, yeah, well, use a hex mag, you're not going to be able to use it in the class because it's going to break before you even get first round through it. Um, Lantern mags you know 100% good to go P mags good to go um, but uh that's about it guys um, another oh, before I forget another thing with the black rain lower um, I know some people don't like having that wobble in between the upper and lower receivers um, they actually come with a screw in the uh, lower in the grip where the grip mount where you can tighten up the gap in between the rifle or the upper and lower receiver and then throw your grip back on it's a very good thing to have um, it does make it kind of hard to break it down at times but it does work um, so but, but yeah that's that's my take on this um, but guys I'm Jason this is my SBR you know my reasons why have a good one